Modulation effects like these seem to be on everybody's boards nowadays, but what I don't see talked about very much is how to use these or when to use these. So today I want to break down what I think are the top three most popular modulation effects in worship music and how you can use these to really master your guitar tone. So I want to touch on chorus first, and I know there's all kinds of different chorus pedals out there. Just for the sake of today, I'm going to be talking about the Julia, which is a chorus and a vibrato pedal. But when I think of chorus, I think of how it really has a lot of power to not just transform a part, but to really transform the whole song. I feel like it really just kind of brings that 80s vibe. And so when it comes to when it might be a good time to use chorus or not, I feel like the question of context really matters a lot. With chorus, it seems like there's not a lot of good middle ground. It's either perfect and it totally fits the vibe of the song, or it just sounds cheesy and it just doesn't really hit. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because chorus isn't really my favorite effect, but in the right context, it really can sound awesome. And I think a good example of this kind of in modern worship is great things. So I'm going to play that lead line with and without chorus so we can take a look at what it sounds like before and after adding that effect in. The thing that stands out to me about this is that it's already a good part. It already sounds great. The chorus, though, adds this new dimension to it, and it really transforms the whole part. It just adds kind of that extra something special to it. And like I said a second ago, chorus is powerful. So when it adds that little something special to the part, it really elevates the whole song. By the way, if you're confused how I'm hitting that last note without moving my hands, I'm using an octave pedal for that, and we're actually gonna talk about that in a little bit, so stay tuned. Another thing with chorus, though, is that it doesn't just sound great for lead lines, but it also works really great for chords. So here's an example of how that sounds, too. kind of the same effect as the lead lines. It really transforms the rhythm part and again that makes such a powerful effect for the whole song that it really changes the vibe for the better. Now for vibrato I'm also going to be talking about the Julia because it does both but vibrato is my favorite effect. I love to use it. Any excuse that I get to throw this pedal on during a song I always look forward to that but when it comes to maybe some more opportune times to use it it's similar to chorus in my mind where context really matters, but it's not so black and white. I do feel like there's a lot more middle ground where you can add vibrato in and it can really transform a part without having so much impact where it changes the whole vibe of the song. The thing with vibrato though is that you do have to be a little careful not to overdo it. It can become really distracting when you have maybe the depth knob a little bit too intense or even the speed or the rate knob, if it's too fast of a modulation, then it can get a little bit over the top. So a little bit goes a long way. So I'm gonna dial in a pretty subtle vibrato setting that I really like to use, but I'm also gonna dial in a pretty intense example too, just to show what that might sound like.
So a couple things to point out here. The first though is that what I don't want you to hear is that there's a right and a wrong way to use effects like these. I'm actually the biggest fan of just trying stuff. You can find the perfect part for a song that doesn't fall within these parameters that I'm talking about today, but this is again where context really matters. Sometimes the context calls for maybe a more extreme setting. But just for the purpose of today, what I notice with the more subtle vibrato is that it really does transform that part and it has a bit of a new feel. And again, with context, for this part in this song that I just played through, the really high depth and the really high rate did not serve the song well. So I wouldn't recommend dialing an effect like that for this song. Also a little trick that I like to use in kind of finding that subtle vibrato sound that I like a lot is to have the lag knob straight up and down at 12 o'clock, the depth knob pointing at the W in Walrus Audio, and then I just have the same direction pointed for the rate knob on the left. Now you might be asking, what about for chords and rhythm parts? Kind of like what we talked about with chorus. Does vibrato have a place when you're playing chords? <laughs> It doesn't sound bad, it just doesn't really add anything for me. I'm not saying there can't be a good use of vibrato for more chords and rhythm parts, but for me, if I'm going to throw vibrato on for a part, maybe instead of playing full chords, picking through that chord can get a little more use out of the vibrato for me. actually almost made it a little bit easier to even hear the vibrato setting because when I was hitting those chords like that, it was kind of hard to pick it out. So kind of giving it the room to breathe a little bit can also help a lot. Now, I don't think octave is technically considered modulation, but I'm gonna bundle it in here because I actually feel like octave pedals are really underrated for how much value you can really get as a guitar player. I'm gonna be using my pitchfork today and I won't even cover everything that this pedal can do because that could probably be an entire video in itself. So I'll just talk about a couple of my favorite uses for using octave. The first way is probably what you'd expect, kind of the more traditional way to use an octave pedal. And it's really just blending in a higher octave. It can really help when you're playing maybe a lead line or something that needs to just cut a little bit more and elevate your guitar higher in the mix. So here's what that sounds like. If you're beginning to notice a theme here for all of these different modulation effects, it's really that there is already a great part written. The modulation effect isn't replacing a great part, it's just adding to what's already there. So in this case, there's a great lead line that's already there, but when I hit that octave effect, it really helps it just step out in the mix just that little bit more. Another way that I love to use this is using the latch function. You don't see this on every octave pedal, but you do see them on things like the Digitech Whammy. And it's really cool. You can set really any interval you want, but when you engage the pedal, the signal kind of shoots up to whatever that interval is that you set. So for that lead line in Great Things, like you saw towards the beginning of this video, and I didn't move my hand at all, I was hitting the latch function on the pitchfork, which basically took the note that I was currently playing and shot it up to that higher note, higher up the neck. Maybe it's a little bit unnecessary because really you could just slide your finger up to that higher note, but I think it sounds pretty cool and does kind of elevate that part just a little bit more. 
Another great way to use octave is to actually blend in both a higher octave and a lower octave. This kind of gets you that crazy organ sound and it's pretty easy to overdo this effect as well. But I feel like there's some pretty interesting ways to use it. One of them I would say is when you're doing swells, it can really add a whole lot of depth and fill a little bit more space. Now, if you want to get really crazy, you can combine some of these effects together. So for this higher and lower octave, sometimes you can add this with your vibrato pedal and then you get kind of that Phil Wickham thing. So like I said, if we really want our modulation effects to have the biggest impact, we really want to make sure that we've got a strong starting point that we're working with. So in this video right here, I actually walk through my whole pedal board from start to finish and how I dial in these types of effects. So go ahead and click right here and I will see you over there. Mm -hmm. 